everyone, John here from rchelicopterfund.com. I'm just doing a short little video here to help um, explain or demonstrate a common question that keeps coming up, and that is how are our model helicopters able to fly and sustain inverted flight? And generally a secondary part of the question that comes up then is, well, how come full-size ones can't do it? And there's four primary reasons for it. Uh, first is collective pitch range, second is power to weight ratios, third is rotor blade design, and four is helicopter design. Now we'll, we'll go over, we'll address each one of these at a time, we'll explain how they relate to the model, and then how they relate to full size and how it's different. So the first one, as I said, is collective pitch range. Now if you don't know what collective pitch is, um, you might want to look at my other video that I've got on RC helicopter controls and I've got a full section on my website that explains it as well. I'll link to both down below in the description. But by, by, full, by our collective pitch range, um, that refers to how much angle of attack we're able to produce with our main rotor blades. And for right side up flying, this would be for an aerobatic helicopter set up for aerobatics. Uh, when we're right side up, we're primarily going to be flying at half stick to full stick. And half stick represents zero degrees, so the blade, rotor blades are flat, they're not producing any lift, right up to around plus 12 degrees or so, producing maximum lift. And just to take one phase of upright flight, we'll look at hovering. Uh, on this machine, I've got it set up when it's in full aerobatic mode. It's hovering at about three quarters stick. And that is producing about plus five degrees pitch, uh, five degrees angle of attack on our main rotor blades. And that's generally what most helicopters fly, uh, hover at, at about plus five degrees. There the machine is producing, you know, enough lift to offset the pull of gravity. So you're in a state of lift equilibrium when you're in a hover. But if we flip this upside down now, and we maintain that plus five degrees, I don't know if this is showing up on the camera, but our rotor blade is actually angled down now at negative 5 degrees. In effect, our helicopter is now being pulled to the ground. However, with, uh, with our full collective range that we've got, producing as much positive as we are negative, we now pull our stick down to quarter stick, and our blade is actually pitching up to produce positive lift in the upright orientation. So that that's the main, uh, main um, that's what I'm trying to get at, that's what I'm trying to explain with full collective range. We've got as much positive when we're flying in the upright orientation as we have negative when we're flying inverted. So when we're flying inverted, we're generally going to be flying from 0 to minus 12, which when inverted is actually a positive angle of attack, as a, and when we're right side up, we're going to be flying in the 0 to positive plus 12 range. So, but that's what I mean by a symmetrical pitch range. We've got as much positive as we do negative. Now, full-size helicopters, on the other hand, they don't have a symmetrical collective range. They do have collective pitch, but they're only going to be producing mainly positive pitch. If the pilot buries the collective stick, it might go down, the main blade angle of attack might go down to minus 5, or sorry, minus 0.5 to minus 1 degree, and that would just be enough to maintain rotor energy if they're doing an auto rotation. So they don't have that collective pitch range to give enough lift when they're inverted, if they could get into inverted flight. Which is our second point here, which is power to weight ratios. Our little machines are very light and they produce tons of power, way more than most people need in fact. Uh, well, unless you're a hotshot 3D pilot. So we've got all this power and it enables us to either roll the helicopter inverted or pitch it, roll it or loop it, whatever. We can do it from a sustained hover. We don't care about decaying our rotor energy much. There's plenty of power to do all that. It takes a lot of power to flip a helicopter upside down. Um, you know, you've got, essentially it's a pendulum. You've got all this weight hanging underneath the rotor disc and it takes a lot of rotor energy to swing that pendulum inverted. Now on a full-size helicopter they just don't, they simply don't have the power to weight ratios to do that. Uh, again, all that mass hanging underneath 
It takes a lot of energy to flip it over. Now there are some high performance aerobatic full-size helicopters. I'm sure some people, it's, most people have seen them. They can do loops and rolls, but they need, they can't do it from a stationary hover. Uh, they don't, there's not enough energy. Most of them they'll have to dive slightly um, to make, get, build up as much energy in their rotor system as, as possible by the design. They're not overspeeding it, but they're building up maximum energy and then that allows the system, to, the rotor system not to stall out when they're rolling or looping and they're relying on actually all that mass of that pendulum, they're relying on the inertia of that to bring them through the loop or to bring, bring them through the roll. We don't care about that. Um, number three is rotor blade design. Uh, we use, if you look at the edge of our rotors, what is known as a symmetrical rotor blade, meaning the airfoil shape is identical on the top and the bottom. It's a mirrored image. Uh, this goes back to our symmetrical collective range. So when we're flying upright with positive angle of attack, our rotor blades would be producing the same amount of lift with the symmetrical shape as they would be when we're flying inverted at negative. So we're producing as much lift at minus 0.5 when inverted as we would be at plus 5 when upright with a symmetrical airfoil shape. Uh, the drawback to symmetrical airfoil shapes is they don't, they're not efficient. Um, whereas a full-size helicopter, they're not using symmetrical airfoils. If you look at a profile of a full-size helicopter rotor blade, they'll have the airfoil shape on top but the bottom will just have a slight curve or maybe even be flat and full size they want every pound of lift out of that rotor blade for, for every horsepower that's going to the shaft as possible so they design the blade for maximum lift efficiency in the upright orientation. Um, now not all RC helicopters have symmetrical blades. Here's a blade off of one of my scale helicopters and as you can see it's got the airfoil shape on top but it's completely flat on the bottom. And for that scale helicopter, uh, this is really efficient. It allows longer flight times out of a battery charge. Very efficient lift when upright, but I could not fly this blade inverted. It's impossible. So that's the third reason is air, air, air for, or rotor, rotor blade design. Probably full-size rotor blades too. You know, again, they're, they're lifting the helicopter up. They're flexing. Uh, and they're designed to flex in that direction. Probably if they were to fly inverted, that downward flex would destroy the rotor. Uh, so rotor blade design is a big one as well. And speaking of design, uh, it's as basic and simple as helicopter design. Full-size helicopters are simply not designed to fly inverted. Uh, they, you know, you would, it would be the same thing essentially as this, a car manufacturer designing a car to drive inverted. If it's never going to be in that environment, why would you waste the money, the extra, the extra components, the extra cost, and the extra weight to build all those inverted flight systems in to a helicopter that's only designed to fly upright? Uh, you know, if it was upside down, you'd need inverted fuel systems, oil systems, the transmission, you need some kind of inverted oiling system for the transmission. And I'm almost betting that any full-size helicopter, if you were to actually flip it upside down by a crane and support it by the weight of the rotor head, you'd drive the rotor shaft right through the transmission and through the bottom of the machine. Again, they're just not designed to take negative loading off the rotor disc. So hopefully that helped clear up, uh, one, how our little models can fly inverted, uh, and those four main points, and why the full-size ones can't. Cheers, folks.